If you know what this is, you're gonna wanna watch. And if you've never heard of it, you're gonna wanna watch. Okay, so today we're making Suadero tacos. If you don't know what this is, let me just preface. Suadero isn't just some kind of a taco. Suadero is a specific cut of meat that is the intermediate part of the cow between the belly and the neck. It must be getting thrown away because I've never seen it at like a basic grocery store. And it's upsetting because I think it makes one of the greatest tacos of all time. Put your goddamn chicken fajitas down, get some Suadero, and let's make this, shall we? Suadero is a cut of meat to accompany that we have a very special dark salsa, which is the key to this special taco, all topped off with some other delectable. Let's begin with the star of the show. You're gonna need two pounds or 900 grams of suadero meat. No, not brisket, not chuck roast, suadero. You can find this at some Mexican butchers, but if you absolutely just cannot find it, and please try, then you can use brisket, which I suppose is somewhat of a comparison, but not really, and defeats the entire purpose. So remember that. We're gonna cut and feed this bad boy, but first you're gonna cure it by combining one teaspoon or four grams of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon or two grams of ground cumin, half a teaspoon or half a gram of ground cinnamon, one tablespoon or 10 grams of kosher salt, one teaspoon or four grams of granulated sugar, We're together until combined. Optionally, you can lightly score the fat on the suadero, season that fool with all your cure, really rub your meat, and let it sit in the fridge covered overnight. This is pretty essential for the flavor, so please try not to skip. Next, get yourself a deep baking dish or heavy bottom pot. In this case, I have a deep half hotel pan. To that, you'll add one head of garlic broken into individual cloves with the skins left on, two serranos cut in half lengthwise, three to five bay leaves. Arrange those around to create essentially a trivet to keep your meat off the bottom. Dab your suadero dry with a paper towel and place on top. Then pour a mixture consisting of one and a half quarts or 1.2 kilos of melted lard and one and a half quarts or 1.2 kilos of melted beef fat, also known as tallow. Your meat should be completely submerged. And look, I get it, sometimes your meat floats a little. So if it does, I like to weigh it down with whatever I can that's heat safe, like these chef press. Cover that with foil tightly and pop into an oven set to 225 to 250 Fahrenheit for about three hours or until the meat is extremely tender. Now listen up, pal. If you want a traditional confit, then you'll let the fat solidify and store it in the fridge for two to four days to age before using. But for the record, you don't have have to do this. Either way, gently reheat that in an oven until hot and melted, pull the meat out and shred it as finely as you can. Then chop it even finer with a cleaver or knife. Add that all to a bowl, add a touch of your confit fat, cover and keep warm. Now for the extra special salsa. This is sort of a traditional salsa that I've combined with the technique of a Thai Nam Prik Pao. Yeah, I know, we're getting a little fancy. In a medium sized pan, add two shallots very thinly sliced, and to that, add one cup or 240 milliliters of vegetable oil. Heat that over medium. Once those start to sizzle, begin constantly stirring until they turn a golden brown and the bubbling begins to subside. Then immediately remove and drain on a paper towel. Allow the oil to cool slightly, then add one ounce or 28 grams of seeded guajillo chilies, two cups or 14 grams of seeded chili de arbol, and two seeded ancho chilies. And let those cook over medium heat, stirring often until those start to brown, then add 12 cloves of black garlic. This is my homemade black garlic. Link in the description for that. Two teaspoons or 12 grams of fine sea salt. Two tablespoons or 20 grams of light brown sugar. Half a teaspoon or half a gram of ground cinnamon. One and a half teaspoons or six grams of ground cumin. Toss to combine, then add one and a half tablespoons or 21 grams of white distilled vinegar. Then just let that simmer over medium heat for one more minute. Add all of your solids to the blender, minus the oil, and blend until as fine as possible. Then add eight peeled garlic cloves. Blend again until as smooth as possible. Then add all of your oil and blend on max speed. And you guessed it, until as smooth as possible. Now pour out this stunning combination of deep crimson red transitioning into a space-like dark void of rich chili flavor. And you have your blackened salsa. We're nearly ready, but we first need to make a quick guac. Traditionally in a mocajete, if you care. Two to three ripe avocados should do. Lightly mash those guys. Then add two teaspoons or 12 grams of fine sea salt, one and a half tablespoons or 23 grams of lime juice, half a finely diced sweet onion, one serrano brunoise, which is just a very fine dice. A quarter cup or four grams of finely chopped cilantro. Mash and fold together until combined and then adjust to taste with salt and lime juice as needed. Remember, we want this punchy, salty, and acidic. Now, optionally, take your shredded suadero, toss with your salsa to taste, and we're ready to assemble. Heat a cast iron skillet over medium high, add in a tortilla, and heat for 15 to 30 seconds per side. Now, if it's hot enough, it will get some light char on both sides and should be beautifully pliable. Repeat with all of your tortillas and place in a tortilla warmer, ideally from Ulysses' grandmother. Now, to fill these bad boys, get generous with your sauce suadero. Arrange it nicely, followed by a fat dollar of your guacamole. A little extra fine diced sweet onion, some crushed chicharron if you're feeling it, and a little 
bit of fresh cilantro. Now slap your cheese grater, throw it out the window on your brand new car, and open your mouth wide for a taco that is sure to have that special someone calling you back even though they looked completely disinterested in you. Taco that nobody's ever heard of, or rather, not enough people have heard of. Suadero. It's got the fixins, the onion, the cilantro. We added a nice acidic guac on top. That's totally optional. I know that Vikram, Pano, and Kendrick would really appreciate it. If it was not on it, they detest it. My feelings got hurt, and I'm not gonna be taste testing these today. You can blame them. Get back. All right, I'll taste it. More importantly, it has this beautiful salsa. Now, many of you may not have seen this before. It's very dark, very rich, and it has sort of these caramelized flavors. Very nice. We made a salsa verde in the Chipotle burrito bowl, which actually goes quite nice on this. A little dollop. So we're doubling up on salsa. You hit it with the lime juice. A little tinkle on there. Wow. Unbelievable avocado aside, the texture of the Suadero meat. The thing that's special about Suadero is it's both tender and fatty, and yet it has that sort of nice dense chew that a good steak does. Sometimes you want that sort of meaty density to it. It's packed with flavor, it's got all the sauces. If you wanna up your taco game, and you wanna really seem like you know what the f you're doing, then you need to bring Suadero onto your menu permanently. And that's for me to you. Ah! You wanna know what else is full of piping hot meat? submerged in its own juices and fat? B-roll. All right guys, and that is it. So we made our Suadero tacos, they came out absolutely perfect. Doing this as a confit, I think, was the perfect choice. We're trying to balance that sort of tender juiciness, and this cut of meat isn't super, super, super fatty. It's it's kind of like in the middle, lowish end, depending on what cut you get, and it worked beautifully. Tacos are good no matter how you have them. This is a nice refresh from the ones that you've already had. Add this to your list. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.